I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now is lawyer turned crossword puzzle editor for the New York Times, Will Short. He is also the founder of the American Crossword Puzzle Tournament and the subject of the critically acclaimed 2006 documentary, Wordplay. Welcome, Will. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Spencer. So, uh, you know, when I told people that you would be participating in this series, the first thing that everybody said was, well, I didn't know he went to law school. <laughs> is that surprising? It's a, uh, it's a strange thing because uh, crosswords are creative, and I don't think of law as being particularly creative. <laughs> well, so why did you go to law school? Well, my older brother went to Harvard Law School, and it uh, seemed like the natural thing to do. I always knew I wanted a career of puzzles. I didn't, think I, I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think you could make enough money doing that. So my plan was to practice law for 10 years, make enough money so I could retire and do what I really wanted, which was puzzles. Uh, during my uh, first, uh, before I went the summer before law school, um, I had an internship at Penny Press Puzzle Magazine. Oh yes, Penny Press, that's where you worked too after you graduated from law school. That's right. So I worked for there the summer before I went to law school and then during each of my other following summers and I went to work for there permanently. Anyway, after my, uh, f my first summer, I realized, you know, I don't have to make a living from creating puzzles, which is really hard because yeah. puzzles don't pay a lot of money. <laughs> uh, you can make a, a, have a career in editing them. Oh, wow. Okay. How, how much does it pay to, to make puzzles? How much does it pay? Well, the New York Times pays the top of the line, and it's not very much. <laughs> it's not very much. It's $200 for a daily puzzle, Okay. 1000 for a Sunday. I don't know if that sounds like a lot, but considering the amount of skill and time and effort that goes into it, it's not very much. So you decided to throw caution to the wind before your first summer in law school and pursue a career in puzzle making. I mean, was that a difficult decision to make, though? Well, I knew I wanted a career in puzzles eventually. Um, in the spring of my first year of law school, I decided then I wanted to go into puzzles immediately. I was going to drop out of law school. Oh, wow. And I wrote, Why didn't you? Well, I wrote my parents, uh, and I thought I would uh, cushion the blow by, uh, I, wrote, I wrote a long letter every week to them. And I wrote this long letter, and near the end, I dropped in the news that I would be dropping out at the end of the year. <laughs> and you can imagine how that news went over. That probably didn't go over very well. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a, my memory is there was a little longer pause than usual in the response. And uh, my mom just wrote the, uh, wrote the perfect response. She jumped right to the subject. These are the reasons you should not drop out of law school. And, uh, and at the end of the letter, she said, uh, no, matter what you do, no matter what you do, we'll love you. And mm. uh, I agreed with her reasons. So uh, I stayed through law school, got my degree, and then never practice. <laughs> well, you know, and so, Will, after everything that I've read about you, it seems as though you had this depth of clarity about your passion for puzzle making at an early age. Is that true? That's true. I started making puzzles when I was eight or nine. I sold my first one when I was 14. Uh, in si at 16, I became a regular contributor to Dell Puzzle Magazines. Um, when I was in the eighth grade, I was asked to write a paper on what I wanted to do with my life. I said I wanted to be a professional puzzle maker. Wow. It was just a crazy idea. What kind of kid <laughs> right, exactly. decides that? I just think that's remarkable because so many people search a lifetime just to figure out what their passion is. So for you, it happened at the eighth grade or even earlier. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went through lots of other ideas, too. I was going to be a librarian. Uh, I was going to be a mathematician. Uh, one time, I, now I decided I was going to be a radio announcer. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, was, uh, so tell me, what does an editor for a crossword puzzle actually do for the New York Times? You mentioned that you don't actually create the puzzle, so what do you what do? You do? What's your day-to-day -day responsibilities? Well, the biggest job actually is looking at submissions, because I get 75 to 100 puzzles submitted to me a week. So I look at every one, everyone gets a response, yes or no. Wow. And usually I, I try to say something about the puzzle, what I like or don't like about it. So at least 100 responses a week. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a huge amount of work. Then there's the actual editing. Every puzzle is uh, slated for a particular day of the week. So Monday is the easiest of the week. Builds up to very hard on Friday and Saturday. Sunday is a larger puzzle, but it's about a Thursday level of difficulty. So I'm editing the puzzles about, on average, about half the clues in the published puzzles are mine. Um, and um, I'm editing for accuracy, first of all, because okay. everything has to be right. Uh, but then I want it to be at the right level of difficulty fresh, interesting, colorful clues that you've never seen before, things right. that twist your mind in an interesting way. Well, do you have any tips for people out there who do use play crossword puzzles? 
My first tip is if you don't solve crosswords, is start with a Monday puzzle and okay. see if you can do it because it's the easiest one. That's what I should begin with. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can get that under your belt, you know, see how through, far through the week you can go. The more puzzles you do, the better you get. Do you use your legal background, your law school experience, in your responsibilities? I uh, do not regret my law degree. I think it's, first of all, great education. Uh, just all-around education. And uh, I work freelance for the New York Times. I do crossword tournament and other things. Um, so I just, I use the, my law background in, in a business sense. It helps in that way. I also think law school is excellent in training the mind to take a complex set of issues, uh, separate the threads, and deal with each one individually. And that's a good way to solve a puzzle and to make a puzzle. Uh, and I just think it was great training for my mind. And when you say you use it in a business way, um, I read somewhere that you said that you thought it gave you more credibility. Perhaps you wouldn't have the jobs that you have now had you not gone to law school. Is that what you mean? Well, that's not what I meant, but okay. that, <laughs> that is another uh, reason for law school. I mean, my undergraduate degree was in enigmatology. You know, how many people, would you take I, me seriously I, 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 if my college degree is in puzzles, if my only college degree was in puzzles? But because I also have a law degree from University of Virginia, which is a prestigious school, mm -hmm. you know, that gives me, uh, uh, people respect me a little more. But aren't you the only person in the world with that degree? Yes. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. Well, I mean, you've done quite well for yourself. Not many people can say that they've had a movie made about them. Tell us a little bit about Wordplay. How did that come about? Yeah, it was a, uh, a couple in California um, who uh, liked the New York Times crossword. They thought that I was a mysterious figure. <laughs> and uh, they thought that they left a, a message on my answering machine at the Times asking if I would be willing to be part of their movie. Uh, and I thought that this, uh, I thought, why not, first of all, maybe it'll appear eventually on late night cable TV. <laughs> it, did, it, did, it did more than that, that's for sure. And uh, uh, it was one of the top 25 uh, highest grossing documentaries of all time. Yeah, it's a great film, and for folks out there who haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. And I, I want to talk about, uh, just for a second, the American Crossword Puzzle Tournament. It was created in 1978. You started it because? Because there was a new hotel in Stamford, the Marriott. They had just opened. Uh, the director of marketing was looking for a way to fill hotel rooms on a slow winter weekend. Uh, inquiries led their way to me. I happened to live in Stamford, uh, Stamford, Connecticut at the time, and uh, I had actually been dreaming of starting a puzzle competition. So wow. it was just perfect coincidence. Uh, the first tournament was a big success. We had 149 contestants. Um, I actually worked for the hotel originally, and then eventually I took over control of the tournament myself. It's now, for the last five years, it's been held in Brooklyn. And it's still going strong, right? It's going, yeah. It's the oldest and largest crossword event in the world. We have uh, about 700 contestants every year, total attendance of about 1,000. And so you created it, though, because you wanted to share your experience in puzzle solving? or Yeah, you know, well, cro crosswords and puzzles are a solitary activity. And one of my motivating things in life is to connect puzzles with real life to connect people with puzzles and to connect puzzles to everyday life. So a uh, crossword tournament is a way to bring people together. And the interesting thing is when uh, crossword people get together, of course they talk about crosswords a little bit, yes. but it's more a, a similarity of mind. You know, their crossword people tend to be smart, interesting, funny, well-read, well-rounded people. <laughs> and when they get together, they talk about everything in the world. And I hear this comment a lot when puzzle people get together. It's like finding a lost tribe. Wow. And they're people you want to be around. Well, I can attest to that. I mean, I'm not a crossword puzzle myself, but I have friends of mine who actually are. So they're exactly what you just described. You know, I, when you were just a little boy playing with your first crossword puzzle, which I believe it was your mom giving you a sheet of paper with squares on it, right. uh, could you have imagined, even in your wildest dreams, the career that you've had? Well, the career I imagined was that I would be in an attic <laughs> somewhere making my little puzzles, sending them out for selling them for ten dollars each. So things have worked out better than that. They've worked out quite well for you. Truly remarkable, truly inspiring. Thanks very much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Spencer. For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.